Good morning and welcome to a very interesting connecting rod issue that I've never seen before. And this is a, uh, on the table here I've got the main crankshaft, crankcase and bearings connecting rods of a customer's um, Sato FA300T engine. So this goes back to one video prior to this and you can watch that and I can put a link on there. And this uh, customer sent me this engine. This is an engine that uh, to the best of my knowledge and what he's told me had maybe up to seven flights on it and this was probably 20 years ago and then it was meticulously taken care of oiled and run the fuel was run out of it oiled and then let set on an engine or on an airplane for 20 years so he sent it to me he had acquired the airplane in the engine he sent this to me and had asked me about whether he should replace the bearings in it and of course I suggested at any time an engine has been sitting for that long especially a, a you know a twin cylinder engine it probably needs to have the bearings replaced so he sent it to me and you'll see all the evidence of that in the video that I post or that I link to but so the issue that I saw when I initially got this engine was it was very difficult to turn over really good shape however oh it turns over really really hard and I haven't taken the and this is when it was all assembled obviously very difficult to turn over and I'm like, well, it's a bearing issue because that's what the bearing issue feels like. It was really difficult to turn over, which seemed a little odd. I mean, it was really hard to turn over for having as few runs as it had on it. But uh, so I disassembled it, took the connecting rods off, as you can see in that video, and I replaced the bearings. Now, when I took that bearing off, the mid bearing, when I removed the mid bearing, it was really locked up. I mean, the bearings didn't, well, these are new bearings in here now, but the bearings didn't look bad. They still looked fairly shiny. They weren't totally crudded up or anything. I mean, it looked really nice inside, but that mid bearing was really tight, was really tight. And I had it to this point, I was turning it over. It's like, yeah, that thing is really tight. So when I got the, all the bearings off the crankshaft, that bearing was still really tight and I could barely rotate it through even though it looked fairly clean I could barely rotate it through so that bearing and the rear bearing I was like well the heck with it I'm replacing bearings anyway I'm gonna throw them in the ultrasonic cleaner clean them up and when they came out they spun fine now I wouldn't reuse them in a customer's engine I might reuse them for some other purpose of mine but they were they felt very free and rotated nicely so that's why when I started doing the connecting rod installation, I found something very unusual. Now, because I've been doing experiments and trying to determine what the issue is, the connecting rod that's on this cylinder, which in my video and how I'm referring to it, is the left cylinder. This is actually the, the problem connecting rod, and it actually belongs over here, but I swapped the two just to try to isolate if there was an issue with the connecting rod or if there was an issue with the crankshaft itself. So this is what a normal looking, nicely assembled boxer style engine should look like. This connecting rod should be flippy floppy with it fully tight. This fastener is fully tight. Both should be, you know, flippy floppy. So what I've got here is that this connecting rod is the one that goes on this side and its, it's fasteners are secured. They're not final torques but they are run down tight. I can't do a turn on them by fingers. So this is fine. This is, now obviously if I were to leave it like this, these would be torqued a little bit more, but so I'm just demonstrating what my issue was that I saw. So that's tight, run down, and everything is great. Now watch, this connecting rod, I do not have those fasteners tight, and you'll see that uh, all I'm going to do here is I'm engaged, I'm rotating, rotating, I just snugged it, rotating, rotating, it just touched. Now watch. See how tight that is? Look at that. And I didn't even snug them down, I just ran them down until they were contacting. So there's clearly, and this did this obviously when it was on this front. So that's why I started doing some troubleshooting. Now I was very meticulous about disassembling this and keeping right and left parts in separate compartments. So 
that's what I'm encountering here. I've never seen an issue like this where it just seems like you go to run the screws down and it just grabs. Now let me loosen. I'll just back these off a half a turn or a quarter turn if even that and now watch. Now everything is, is grand again. It is still a little tight because I didn't. So what I'm going to do here for the purpose of this video is I'm going to go ahead and just take these connecting rods off completely. Both of them. I'm going to take this one off, the suspect one off first and mark it. And then what I want to do is compare these two side by side and see if there's anything that I can visually see that's different. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me that a, an engine with such low time would have such a strange issue. So I spent some time speaking with the owner of this engine yesterday and we managed to find a replacement connecting rod from RC Japan. But it's like, wow, this just really sucks. Why is this? Why is this thing? And see these threads, these screws really thread in a long way. So as you can see, I'm still on unthreading here. That connecting rod should just drop right out when I'm done. There we go. So that's the one that goes theoretically or not theoretically, goes on the right side of the engine. So let me take this other one off here real quick. And then we'll start our comparison. Okay, so I've got the connecting rods here on my little grid thing. I don't know if that's gonna help or not. And this is the one that's the troublesome one and it's the one that actually came out of the right side of this engine. And I put an R on there and I put some marks on here just to make sure that I keep these things straight. So the other thing is, some OS engines I've seen, the connecting rods actually have an orientation for the end cap. Because they would have either a dot on them and then a dot on this one, on the main shaft end. But I've never seen, I have not seen an orientation mark on these at all. So I don't know that there is one. That's the first thing. But visibly looking at these connecting rods, I don't see that they're bent at all. I mean, and a bent connecting rod would not result in what I saw there. It has to do with the interface of the end cap to the connecting rod to the crankshaft. And I've got some calipers here, but I'm not really sure what they're going to tell me. So, I mean, I'm just... I don't have the proper tools to really do super high precision measurements of these things to see if there's any wear and tear. I mean, this, this, I'm just going to go ahead and put this one back on. This uh, engine had such low time. I mean, how could anything like this happen? There was no evidence of damage. The owner has, a, the owner knows the person he got the engine and the airplane from very well. And he knows how well he takes care of his stuff. So it's like, what could possibly have happened? Is this something that just came out of the Sato factory like that? Um, that was just not right to begin with? I mean, because on such a low time engine, what could potentially happen? Because to me, what it seems like, it almost seems like this one is gripping the connecting rod too tight, like it's either elongated, out around, or something. But you just saw me screw that piece on there. And you saw how easily it fit together. So, I mean, I'm not seeing an issue. And let me finish screwing this one together. And I'll try to take some really crude, really crude measurements. Unfortunately, the crankshaft is installed in the engine. And I really can't check the roundness of the journal on that. But since I swapped these things back and forth and... The issue always follows this connecting rod. I don't, I don't think there's an issue there at all. But I mean, I'm just not. I'm just visually, I don't see anything here. So I'm just gonna kind of do one of these things and say, right here at the top, I'm reading 0.51 inches, half an inch. 
if I go 90 degrees, I'm reading 0.511. If I go another turn, uh, another area, I'm reading like 0 0.5095. Let me go to this other quadrant. 0 0.0152. Is that good? I don't know. I don't know what the tolerances are. Let's check this one here. This is a good one. 0 0.5105. Point five one two five. Do the quadrant. Point five one zero zero. I mean, so to me, these numbers look the same as on this connecting rod. So I'm not seeing anything here, and. You know, I just don't know what would be causing this strange issue. There's no signs of galling on the inside of this one, or, well, either of them, actually. And I know I already screwed these pieces together, but I mean, there's just no sign of any issue whatsoever, anywhere. So it's really kind of a mystery to me as to what is going on here and I just don't have I don't have anything close to you know being able to do anything more of a real measurement here I don't have a half inch I don't believe I have a half inch dowel um, let me check here real quick and see if I've got a, a small socket that might suffice as something like that it's not going to do it. And I know this is about as imprecise as you can get. But when you're really trying to just don't have the tools or the skills. I'm just looking to see if I've got a socket that kind of just drops, drops in there so that I can at least kind of and do another really rough course. Yeah, I don't have anything here. This is not a fruitful exercise. So anyway, the bottom line is a new connecting rod is on order, but I have no idea why it's necessary. I just don't, I don't understand it. It just doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. So, that's our learning example for today. And, and uh, it's not like this is the first boxer style twin cylinder engine that I've worked on. I've worked on at least a half a dozen of them before. And the last, well, actually I did a, the Pegasus four cylinder uh, late last year and it actually had a bent connecting rod. And of course that was an OS engine and OS had a history of the early connecting rods being made out of bronze or some bronze material alloy and it was soft and they bent so they they made changes but to my knowledge I've never heard of anybody having issues with Sato connecting rods at all so that's why this is just a complete mystery to me as to why this is happening it's supposed to be just a really quick and dirty bearing installation or bearing replacement get the engine going and get it back to the owner type of thing and now this is dragging out into however long it takes RC Japan to ship me a new connecting rod. So this thing's going to be sitting here, taking up space for, you know, another week or two. When it should be going back to its rightful owner for, for you know, him to play with. So anyway, that's my instructional video, quandary video of the day. And I hope you learned something or maybe hope you can, uh, somebody watching can lead some insight into what's going on with this.